Yeah, it's 24 seconds in. Kobe numbers. Hey, I like that. You see what I did there? Yeah, I did see that. It's a good one. I'm I've got a one of one, one of one piece of art coming soon. So you've got the only. The only one. Kobe Bryant art. <laughs> one of one. One of one. Um, I said you need to give me the original and I'm going to delete it. So no one else can ever copy it ever again. It's mine. I like that. You know what? That's, that's some special shit. Welcome back to another episode <laughs> of the Murph and Marta Shut Ha! Ah! In this next song, you must march around the room. Here we go. Hey, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Just sit down in the chair. You get into the noises yeah. as well. <laughs> I got asked the other day, um, why do you always make chicken noises? Chicken noises. <laughs> yeah, I've got into this recent habit of like, after I, I'll say some shit. Well, it might be something, right? Anything that needs an emphasis, I'll go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And the computer's just turned off. <laughs> I've never heard, I've never thought of it as a chicken noise, but I do hear you do that. Yeah, so I was like, the other one is, bra. It's a bra. Bra. I'm a 32 year old grown ass man making noises. That's what shit. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh, man, I'm sweaty. Yeah, you did it. It's, a, it's warm finally. It's a warm day. Probably 8th of January. <sighs> almost pretty much the middle of summer, and it's finally getting warm. It's finally getting warm. I went for a walk and then did a bike ride. Look at you, Look at me, you fit bitch. bitch right here. Yeah. How was your massage? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Naive, <laughs> <laughs> right? Mr. Naive. Murph got a massage you didn't kind of want this morning. So. Well, no. no. You didn't, well, you got one, but you didn't. I got offered one I didn't want, and I turned it down. You turned it down. <laughs> and you got one that was less than what was offered. Less than what I <laughs> got a regular old massage. Figure that out. <laughs> Now we're back! New year, <laughs> new year, new us. New us, yes. Not really, it's the same us, just doing yeah, new much. things. How's your year started? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been good. Um, as I, it pretty much happens every year for some reason. I don't know why, but it's always a slow start. Yep. I know you've said you've got back in, like everyone's back. And you're my my, my and shit just hit the fucking yeah. floor running. I wasn't ready for it. And I've got some client, like new clients starting up pretty soon. And they, they already said like back last year, we'll start end of January or beginning yep. of February. I'm like, cool. Yep. Uh, but it seems to me in my 15, well, this is my 15th year. I mean, no, it's not 16th year. Yeah. I mean, now, um, every year has been the first couple of weeks dribbling back with clients. Now here's, here's five and we go three more and here's seven. <laughs> and by week four, end of January, I'm like, Busy again. You're back in it's it. It's full on. So, which isn't bad. No. It's like a nice progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Progression back. I'd rather that, maybe a little bit quicker. But yeah. It's a nice way to get back into. I feel the like the way bit. you get back into business is the way you are as a person. You know what I mean? Like gradual, just, just chill. We build up. Let me do our thing. Right. Mine was like now. You're either everything or nothing. That's it. Right. <laughs> I'm, All I'm definitely or not that kind of person. <laughs> My shit's been good. My shit's been good. Like, exactly. Yeah. Mine, mine's gone, like, busy. I'm still working, like we discussed in the farewell episode, on the systems of the business. Yeah. That was fun. Um, that one. But that's I've, up. That's up, so you can go look at that. Yeah, yeah, Episode 35. Yeah. Check that one out. Um, that was just us recapping the year before the start of the year. Um, but, like, I've actually got new clients now that allow me to go back into, or that they're, they're, they're training... Um, programs are allowing to go back into what we used to do check based yeah really really cool stuff you yeah. know back into kinesiology back into breathing mechanics back into posture alignment so this is far from the s and c side of things sports performance uh this is more about like holistic well-being mm -hmm. so um i'm pretty pumped with that like it's just nice to get back into that and be able to use like all my powers yeah, you know what I mean? it's good. I think it's good to do something a little bit different too. Because yeah. I mean, as much as I do love the athletes coming in and spending time and really racking my brain to try and figure out new and better exercises, not so much new and better, but different exercises to give yeah. them to to improve their sport specific performance. I don't mind when someone comes in and is like, "I've got a bad back, yeah. and I need to to do that sort of yeah. stuff, break it down, yeah. and go to the finer details of things, or figure it out." Uh, really into the, the biomechanics a little bit more, yep. why the issue's there, mm -hmm. uh, which is very check-based stuff. Yep. That's cool. I enjoy doing that. Yeah, this was this was awesome. So we caught up for the first time <clears throat> Wednesday, just gone, and we went through everything. And I basically had to throw a look. She comes in, she's had, she had surgery last year, hasn't healed properly, issues have happened, blah, 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 blah. I'm in pain. 
And I was like, awesome. We're going to take it back right to the start. Mm-hmm. And we're doing like, yeah, breath work. We're doing some Feldenkrais work. We're doing mm-hmm. some like mobility I saw that stuff. Morning. I saw your Feldenkrais. Oh man, I was, I was, I was like, I'm in, my, I'm in my zone right now. Yeah. You, know, you can't really do that in, t- in the team center. You can only get like, like really in-depth one-on-one and if someone's got specific goals. Yep. You know what I mean? So that was actually really, really cool. I'm like loving where that is. Nice. Yeah. Uh, is this an athlete? No, no, no. So she's uh, 51. Uh, she's 51. She's mom. She's a worker. Like she has her own business or two businesses. Um, and she's just in pain. She doesn't have to heal from her, yep. from her surgery. Yep. You know, she had like an ankle surgery. So she's getting, come back from that. Um, yeah, so which is actually really, really cool. You know, it's, like I said, it's not, not a performance thing. It's a out of pain back into function. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's nice getting back into that because it allows you to then delve back into, okay, cool. For me, it's like, what can I now add to what I'm doing currently? You yeah. know, obviously I'm trying to do as much as I can, but I'm like, cool, am I going to add breath work into my team-based stuff? Probably not. You know, we discussed it's, it before. I've tried it. I tried it back with the sixes and it's difficult because I find it's something you really need to cue a lot on. Yep. And in a big team, like... And I'm only with basketball, so it's only I had 16 players. Compa- yeah. And you compare that to soccer or football, which yeah. is now in the 40s. Uh, even with the 15, 16 players, it was difficult because you focus on this one, trying to get them breathing correctly, and there's 15 that are not. Yeah. So as much as I, I love that sort of stuff, and I do see the importance of it in a team setting, it is quite difficult to do. I would like to discuss. This is what I was thinking on my on my bicycle right here. Cool. The remember the check totem pop. Hey. Hey! I do. Let the let's, let's put up a... Is that from your massage or is that the phone <laughs> pop? <laughs> you told me that story, you knew I was going to come back up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not that kind of person. I uh, know, it's so funny. Um, we'll put up the totem pole <laughs> the in totem between us. Between us. Uh, that, that would be a copyright thing, would it? No, nah, it's a check. We'll, we'll, we'll check. We'll, we'll take a check. We'll at C... Check. Done. All right, yeah. cool. Because I want to I want to uh, discuss the... Do you the, remember it? Top to bottom? Not every single one in order. Have you got it in the book here? No, no, we'll put it up. We'll put it up. Yeah? Exercise coach? Yeah. It'll be in there. Because um, I want to discuss the... Because I'm, getting, because I'm getting back into this... Uh, just this one-on-one out of pain into function, right? Outside of just... Um, uh, exercise performance and recovery nutrition. We're going into now, I'm going into breath, I'm going into stress, I'm going into hormonal levels, da, da, da. Um, I say hormonal levels, going into hormonal sort of fluctuations and whatnot. I'm gonna go, cool, we can go real deep into the totem pole. Now, the check totem pole, if you can actually see this, is, looks like thus. We'll, we'll put it up again. We'll put it up again. We'll get it on, on, on the, uh, the Google images. But keep it up because we can actually go through it. And what, what the totem pole describes is a way we kind of look at the body, right? Uh, yeah. It's the, the hierarchy of health in the body. The bottom of the totem pole being the joints. The spine, yeah. the hips, the legs. Um, and then from that, we go up into a hierarchy of the pelvis. And then we go to the, the digestive organs, stress hormones, um, all the way up through until we get to the top which is breath, which is the most important one at top here. If you don't breathe right, everything under it is affected. If you don't eat right, next things are affected, da da da, all the way down. And you gotta work through the bottom. It's amazing when I do go through that. I mean, I don't, I actually have the totem pole on, on me when I'm going through with clients, but when I try and, when I talk about it with them, I say, you know, how's your movement? How do you have any injuries and aches mm-hmm. and pains? And how's your diet? And I sort of run through it in my head mm-hmm. through the totem pole mm-hmm. at the top. And one of the very last things I go through with them is I teach them how to breathe again. Mm-hmm. You know, doing the whole diaphragmatical breathing and um, all that sort of stuff. And they go, "What's? Why are we doing this? Why? Why are you telling me how to breathe again?" Mm-hmm. And it's funny how much they, when I explain to them, they're like, "Oh no, shit! Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Ah, oh, it it does make so much common sense. Yeah. Once you just stop and think about how much the um." Like your, your transverse abdominis, your uh, diaphragm, play a factor in every other part of your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, I obviously it has a stress response as well, yep. the, the deep you breathe and so on and so on. But yeah, it, it does make sense once you've explained it. Yeah. And I think understanding, I would like to give a brief overview for people that watch this that aren't maybe sports based. Yeah, as on. well things they can sort of look, look for that's basically where I was like, you know what, we'll just chat about this right now. Yeah, this is on. where I'm vibing. Cool. You know, um, and how every component of what you put into your body, whether it's air, food, water, whatever that may be, 
and what you output from your body movement wise has an effect on plus sleep and sleep and sleep yeah, yeah. Um, has an effect on output and function yeah you know everything's connected go what was the four doctors sleep um, Don's gonna murder me <laughs> Sure. Know this, boys. No, I wasn't sleep, nutrition. He can add it into my movement, text messages. Sleep, it? nutrition, movement, and quiet. Quiet. Yes. Quiet. Yeah. Don't know. I got that. Not him. I you got the fourth one. <laughs> I'm already waiting for my text <laughs> message. Get text. Um, yeah, and how and how it affects the body, and and I think the going back into more of this work now, you know, having this come up, and actually being able to like dive into it with someone who understands the basis of it. Mm. Okay, I understand what you're doing or why. Let's just go into the head first. Um, straight into the commitment side of things. So you know, I want to get out of pain. So that's that's a big that's a big motivating factor to, to invest in what we're doing. Um, and going back into it, I'm like, cool, I might start bringing some more of this stuff out like here or on Instagram or on socials or whatever we're going to do um, because there's so much power in it. There's, and there's a lot of stuff from the check exercise coach book that we oh, that yeah. I still use like it might not be directly, but I bring it into pretty much every session. Yep. Like movement patterns. Yep. I don't know if you've seen me at the board doing my programs when of I first I get have. in. And I'll always, my process is get in, get, pick up my texter, <laughs> make sure the board's free to use. Yep. And I just start writing down the program and I'll always stand back and I'll just w- look at it. And I'll run through my head, squat, push, bend, pull, lunge, twist. Go over it and over it. Yep, cool. They combine that one there. I swap that one over. And that's mm-hmm. pretty much what I do with every program when I write, whether I'm here in front of the... So <clears throat> I was doing a program for one of my athletes the other day and I was sitting in front of the computer and on... I actually, dis- I actually discussed... I actually, all of it. I actually discussed movement patterns with a, um, a client coming out from rehab, a new one, coming out from rehab yesterday as well. Yep. So same thing, same movement patterns, same sort of shit. Yep. No. So if I was to spin the camera around, I've got two screens for my computer. When I do my program design here, this screen to the left has the uh, photos I take, sorry, Donald, photos I take for the, the postures mm-hmm. and the videos I take for movement assessments. Mm-hmm. On this screen next to it, I have all the program templates. Uh-huh. So I'll go here, look at it, look at it, look at it. Okay, cool, this, this, and this. Put it in, this, this, and this, put it in, and then start swapping around based on um, physiological loading and all that yeah. sort of stuff. I actually had someone come in and watch me do it the other day and they're like <laughs> and she's saying what are you what are you looking at what what, what can you see because mm-hmm. they couldn't see anything mm-hmm. and I don't know if I mentioned this on the Murphy My Touch show before but you're probably very much the same you know how in the matrix they don't see things they see like code <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going with this yeah what I see when I walk through, I say that I normally tell the story of the mall. When I walk through the mall, all I see is like plumb bob lines. See, I, you know what I see? I see skeletons. I was told skeletons, about, yeah. I, I see, I, sorry, I just see, I see like vector forces. Yeah. And I said this to my class before. I said, look, love you as a person, right? And we're bonding, right? But I only see you as a combination of <laughs> vectors doing some shit. Yeah, angles and, and angles and movements and where I need things to be. That's how I see you right now, yep. you know? Yeah. <laughs> So that's pretty much what I do. When I'm looking at it, I don't see a person there. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, this, this, and this, and this isn't correct, and this is correct. See, mm-hmm. this is doing it. It's like, I can't see any of that, or I don't know how you picked up on that. Well, mm-hmm. obviously, it's 16 years. Yeah, of course. Since uh, exercise coach would be 11 years now. My mind did exercise coach. I reckon I did mine in 08 or 09. I know, I My very was, 09. I think it was 10 for me. Yeah. 10. So, yeah, that's. Mm-hmm. So I, I use this. Even to this day, all the time, um, not always directly, but it's somewhere in my head as I'm doing yeah. program design. And I, I do my program design very similar. Yeah. But I don't have the, the multiple screens and bottom lines and code. <laughs> <laughs> mine is mine is I'll take so I take videos. I like to see the videos. Yeah. So I'll get the client there um, and I'll, I'll watch that. But I take the videos. I want to see them in movement. Yeah. And what's really really interesting. This code all ties in well because the other day I saw a thing on Instagram. There's another coach put out a um, so-and-so's first session. Here's how she squatted. Bam, chick squatted. Here's how she squatted after after at the end of the first session. I fixed her up, and that's what I asked you today about putting the the weight plates underneath ankles, right? Yeah. All right. And I'm kind of like, you don't really fix her up. You just kind of yeah. jam something in there. You know what I mean? Um, See, and 
Do you want to talk about any of that stuff? Yeah, man, going nuts, man. Do you want to do it now or later? Because you're in the middle of a conversation. No, we'll do it a bit later. Okay. Um, and so, and I was like, oh, shit, okay, cool. So obviously, you know, that's that's happening there. Um, but for me, it was more like, all right, when I took my videos of my rehab plant coming in yesterday, right? So she's going through a physio process and she's now at a point where she can start to load. You know, so she came to see me uh, October last year, I reckon it was. And I said, look, where you're at, there's no benefit coming to see me. You know, you need to go see physio, do your physio work, and then come and see me. Oh, staying in your lanes. Stay in my lanes, man. I'm nice. tying everything in, everything we talked nice. about today. Nice. Um, you know, so she did physio, and she sent me a text saying, hey, look, I'm ready to come in. Done. See you Thursday. Came in, and I was taking some videos of her squatting, you know, and so I'm very much of the opinion that I don't want to add the external um, forces. I don't want to give you weight players. I don't want to give you orthotics put, put, to put a block okay, yeah, I, see I don't that. want to give you those kind of no external props, shit. No props yeah, yeah, none yeah. of that kind of shit I want to see if I can get you moving efficiently without having <clears> to do that <throat> utilising maybe maybe a weight maybe a band or a ball or something and see if your body can actually learn the motor pattern yep. and then go and do it yep. you know um, and so it just brought up to me when I was doing the videos I was doing a video and I was like alright cool her squat's absolutely fucking terrible thinking about how everything's moving I was like you know what I need to do Problem solving on the spot. I'm going to give her a weight to the front and then see how she balances that. So holding a weight player out here, like yep. doing she, a bit of counterbalance, bit of counterbalance yep. work, and her squat, perfect. Nice, just like that. Nice. You know, um, but it, it took me back to whole because then I did lunging and stepping and bushing and pulling and mechanics. I'm just and thinking, why? Why, why would the counterbalance have fixed her squat? Do you even know what her issue is? No. Well, then you're not going to know. And that's what I'm thinking. And that's the time for what more. other possibilities? But anyway, keep going. <laughs> I'm creating a plumb bob line back to the person. I'm pretty sure I know who you're talking about. So I'm picturing in my head. She's up there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, so um so yeah, and for me I was like, cool, this is where the movie pants go into it. You know, and taking those videos and, and seeing that. But I I took maybe four or five different videos and then I'll go construct that program just from from that. Yeah. And be like, cool, da, 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 da. here's how we see move up, whatever. Um, and for me, it was like, you know, taking that next step now going, all right, cool. We've gone from uh, focusing on like the spine and, and the hips and pelvis and the movements of things to now taking that next big step with this new client and going, going to breath and um, yeah. organ mechanics and whatever. It's really refreshing, you know? And so now I'm starting to think like, oh, how can I incorporate some of this stuff into what we're doing? Um, but then it also me think again about learnings, right? You just gave me that cold brew. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. Right? Without knowing context, I've tied in about four different conversations yeah, we've had recently yeah. to read this, this <clears> thing here, <throat> and um, you know, and like the learnings and and um, the the what you, like the education side of things, and putting out more of that. You know, well, put, for us to for us to put yeah. out more. Of that. We've discussed. Do we do we talk about what we discussed? Did yeah, I, go on. A little goal setting session. Yeah. And what we want to do is put out a, a workshop, mm-hmm. don't we? We're going to put a workshop on some things that we've learned. Yes. And this will be part but, of it. And also things we do that have got results. We want to put out some Murph and Mai Tai's systems. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, that'll be more to come. If you, want, you like that idea, let us know. Yeah, See what we're doing. Um, so yeah, so really got me going to again and seeing her. So at the end of the, her second session today, mm-hmm. um, she was like, I, she was um, Eastern Block, right? Mm-hmm. And she was like, I am really happy and really excited. And I don't get really happy and really excited often. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's like the hugest compliment. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's nice to that's where that's when my years kinda of started. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I like that whole it there's nothing better than someone coming to you. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is the same story with that client, I'm mm-hmm. not sure of her name. Um, but when clients come to you saying, I've seen these people yep. and not they don't name names because yep. they're pretty good with that. I've seen doctors and physios and <clears throat> other strength other coaches PTs and whatnot. And, whatever. and they haven't been able to help me. And within two weeks, three weeks, they come back. I'm like, how's that yep. issue going? Oh, yeah, it's, well, I'm good. No, yep. I don't feel it. And again, I can bring that back to the checks up we've done. It's because of that mm-hmm. that I've been able to figure it out. Yep. It's because I'm not looking at, I've got a sore shoulder. What's wrong with the shoulder? Like, what's going on with the spine? What's going on with the how's the, 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 ax, yep. uh, the axis and so, so on? So... I sat in the physio room in this first consult for like half an hour just with, we've got a, um, a skeleton yep. that sits on there. I like that skeleton. I've it's used good. that skeleton. I want to get a bigger one. That'd be cool. Yeah. So we've got a, um, a skeleton with, it's got tendons and some muscles on it, but it's mainly a skeletal structure and it's just on a little stand. Uh, it's probably about desk height, like desk lamp height. Yeah. And so it's on the stand and I was like, 
it's not very movable. <laughs> the arms and it, it's very small. It's so. very small. You're trying to do stuff, but I was like talking and talking. And at one point, I was like, oh, uh, if you want me to slow down or like not give you this much detail, <laughs> let me know. She's like, I'm okay, keep going. Yeah. I think some people get fascinated by how much like people like us would know. And when we start getting mm. into it, they almost get in a zone with us, I even though so. they don't understand what we're saying. I Which think, is the issue that I've had before. Yes, your 300 different cue points. Yeah, yep. where I, I love what I'm doing so much and what I'm talking about. And I've got to stop myself and be like, if I'm going too much into this or I'm going too full on, too technical, just tell mm. me to back it off and yep. we're good to go. No, 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 you're good. Keep going, keep going. I, I was always like, not even a matter of knowing so much. I think it was more a matter of fascination than what the body can do. The yeah. information. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? Absolutely. And that to me, like going... Like, so we're very going back into, all right, cool, identifying what the issue was and then seeing where things were at and going through the movement analysis and then whatnot and going, all right, cool, this is what we're going to look at. I want to start with the breath. And I had a choice to make. I could have gone straight into some postural movement stuff, but yeah. where she was presenting, I was like, this 100% is top to bottom totem pole. Yeah. You know, and so I'm going to start there. And I was like, yeah, yeah. take this shit. Um, so, yeah, so that's been, that's been super fucking cool. That's been super fucking cool. That will be my first recommendation for like new PTs and new trainers and coaches and whatnot, do the fucking check course, exercise coach number Ooh. one. You've just, just kind of segued into a topic I've been wanting to talk about. Let's fucking do it! Should we do it? Let's right. do it. So based on what you just said, yep. do you remember what you just said? Yep. Say it again. Uh, for new PTs, trainers and coaches, I would recommend a check exercise level one course. Cool. So going... Check exercise coach, what's it called? Uh, exercise coach, yeah. Mm-hmm. Level one was the... Yeah, the practitioner stuff. Next one up. Yeah, when we're not there yet. Um, what I was going to talk about and ask you the question of was is, what would you if you were to go back to your younger self starting in the industry, like Josh on the wall with the gym, Josh on the wall that skinny <laughs> ass little Josh, skinny ass little prick, that one. <laughs> what would you? What advice would you give him? At which, pretty much at the end of the day, is what you just said. Mm-hmm. New trainers coming in this, into the industry. What do you want to tell them? What do you want to tell them to get to a high level, good level strength coach? What would I tell Josh or new trainers coming into the yeah. industry? <laughs> not Josh. Not Josh. To not do. <laughs> <laughs> like I wouldn't. For me, I would say do more of what you just did, but invest a bit of time in. The extra courses on the check stuff is all the only thing that I was like, oh, I wish I would have done that back in the day, but yeah. I still do that now. Yeah. But I decided to make a shift into business rather than the physiology at that point. Yeah. I, wa- I basically wave load my education. Um, my my advice to younger trainers coming in. Not even young, just beginner trainers. Beginner trainers. So coming trainers. in the industry, yeah. Younger experienced, less experienced trainers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really good. This also segues because I did a fucking coaching session with my four trainers yesterday. Cool. Uh, or my four SSC coaches. All right. So Yonthi is thinking even... Oh, some of them are brand new. Though, some, like, like they're fresh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They're so like that, that fresh. Level. So not M. Not M. She's too far into this already. She's yeah. now almost vet. No, experience. year and a half. She's got some experience. She's, She's some not experience. vet. You're got some vet. experience. I'm talking like... Fresh. I am my first week. Okay. You're fresh. All right. You come in. Stay in your lane, <laughs> number one. That's a huge... <laughs> know your limitations. Do you just want to, just quickly, what does that mean? Basically, just know what, what you can do. And if you if you have any doubts about what you can do, then you just refer to something that you know can do it. Yeah, know your or scope. Or know that you know can do it. You know your scope. You know, you know you can do it. But if you someone asks you about nutrition, don't pretend to know nutrition. Yeah. Just fuck them up to someone else. All it's right? better to not pretend something because if you Absolutely. fuck it up, you're done. You know, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think that relates back what I was saying with this new client that came to me in October. And I was like, you know, your problems, I can't help you right now. Yeah. I could have said, yeah, mm-hmm. come pay me for sessions. And then the results wouldn't have been, like she would have got results, but wouldn't have been as great because that's not my scope. You yeah. know, you go to physio, yeah. then come and see me. You know, know where that sits. So that'd be my first, first advice is that you will get tempted to get sucked into trying to go outside of what your scope is or what you actually know. Um, this whole Dunning-Kruger effect, right? It's that whole thing. What's that? Dumb people think they know more than they know. Okay. Okay. Um, so basically, I would say, that would be my first piece of advice. So trying to get sucked into that stuff. Do um, find a mentor would be mm. my, my second biggest one that you would that you can learn off and that can provide you information or advice on where to seek proper or where to seek not proper where to seek learnings 
Yep. You know what I mean? So if you come to me and say, hey, Josh, where can I go to learn? Da, 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 I can say, well, here's what worked best for me. Go yep. and try your thing. You know, exactly what I've done with M. You yep. know? And then that would be my, my second one. So seek a mentor. And then third one, you're going to spend at least three to four years studying. You know, as in, it doesn't have to be formal study. It's not like a university. If you just become a trainer, cool. But you've got to, you've got to know that your first three to four years are going to be spent building your repertoire of skills in regards to coaching, skills in regards to exercise selection and programming, that whole that whole spectrum, skills in regards to um, business as well. And ethical business is probably a big one, I would say, as a caveat to stay in your lane, is that also when you're looking at marketing and promoting yourself, <clears throat> ethical business matters. Yep. Play the long game. Yep. Do not play this bullshit marketing crap. I'm seeing it too much and I hate it. Like six pack in six weeks sort of Six thing. pack in six weeks bullshit or, you know, flashy photography and flashy branding and flashy fucking social media posts, but you're training shit, you yep. know, that fucks me off. Yeah. Um, so they're probably my, my thing. I felt that. You felt that one. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. out of me. Um, so yeah, so to, to recap what I would do is know your scope, stay in your lane, work out what your, what your level is that you're good at, stick to that, refer out when you need to. Yep. Find a mentor, and then, um, what was the last one? Uh, find a mentor, and then uh, spend the time learning. learning yeah. yeah, so you know, allow <clears throat> and prepare for three to four years of development before you can get somewhat comfortable with what you're doing. Yep. You know, and that can, like I said, that can be ethical business, um, physiology and mechanics and movement exercise selection, and then whatever like your mentor might guide you into. Yep. I like it. What would They're you do? Three good ones. Thank you. Uh, definitely, I can. I agree with all those, hundred percent. Um, <laughs> now you got the hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the the learning part I want to add on to is learn everything. Like, don't define it. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't start <laughs> the stock market. That's <laughs> fifteen years into the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, start earlier than that. Okay. Um, but there, there's no such thing as a bad course, like to get into. Like, yeah, I mean, and I mean that it, like congruently there's no such thing as a bad course there might be courses you go to and walk out of playing that was shit but i wouldn't say it's bad that you went and did it no no, no. okay so you, ne- like you need to know what's good and what's bad i was about to list about 40 bad courses <laughs> <laughs> that's because we're done right? fair. that's fair i get what you mean I, I think you need to go and just learn everything based in our industry mm-hmm. uh within your scope still uh-huh. obviously some things are going to elevate your scope mm-hmm. or broaden your broad, scope, broad your scope. Broad. um which is even better that's fantastic but i think just learning Everything in our industry is going to be great because it's going to help you figure out what kind of trainer or coach you actually really want to be because mm-hmm. you're going to find more passions or... Try things. Try different things. Yeah, yeah. Again, in your scope. Yeah, yeah. Don't yep. go outside of that. Um, but you're not really going to learn about what you really like or what you, the direction you really want to go in if you're just in that path. I if mean, you're just you, doing you one thing, yeah, correct. you got to experiment. you got to try out this and go, no, that was shit. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that goes for like reading things as well. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do the courses, but read journal articles if, if you can read the journal article. I know I couldn't for ages. I yep. did not get my head around them. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. Exactly. Yeah. Now I can. Yeah. Now I'm good. Thanks, Uni, for that one for sure. Um, read men's magazines. Read women's magazines. Read anything. Anything you can get your, your hands mm-hmm. on, your eyes on. Read it and figure out if it is congruent to what you want to do Mm-hmm. with your coaching world mm-hmm. um, that'd be the first one is just read and learn as much as you possibly can and mm-hmm. get rid of the shit that doesn't sit with you yeah um, number two is you sort of mentioned it but you mentioned it in a different way is take your time with things don't try and get the athletes straight away uh, don't try and get the, if that's, the big if names that's where you want to go yeah 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 mm-hmm. so obviously that, that's don't aim for the upper echelons of your pathway yeah ASAP um, don't go too much into um, have the, the big diseases too early. I think take your time starting off with the smaller things, build up your experience, uh, which is the next one. Um, build up your experience slowly, learn as much as you can in that time, and then when you truly feel ready and confident, mm-hmm. then start to really um, get into that that world of mm-hmm. the top echelon of clients that we're looking for. Athletes, the, the more serious disease or those end phases and that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like depends where you're going to like rehab. So Emma, like one mile trainers, Emma, she got into OT. <clears throat> yep. She got into training as uh, PT. She had, she'd done a degree beforehand, I think it was in nutrition. Uh, and then she became PT. She got her cert four qualifications. She worked with me for about three years. And then from that, within that time, she's also then did a 
um, bachelor's in OT and she became a patient therapist because that's the way she wanted to go. She, went, she was like, oh, I like what this is. Here's where I want to go with it, you know. Um, and, you know, so there's the rehab side of things. There's, like you said, you know, athletics, sports performance. There's um, disease and, and function. You know, yep. It could be anything. Yep. But so, I think that's really good. Yeah, take your time with that. Um, don't rush into it. The last one is get as much experience as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. And that sort of ties in with your mentor. Yep. one. So find someone who you like, who you trust, uh, who you somewhat want to emulate. Of course, you're never going to emulate someone completely because that's them, not you. But find someone who you, you like the, the way they work mm-hmm. and go experience how they do things. Um, go experience working under someone in a sporting team of sports where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Basically, when you start to figure out, and this takes the time, where you want to go with things, try and get into that world as soon as possible mm-hmm. in experiencing and observing and using them as mentors to, to help build you. And also, so, I want to add to that, be quick to cut. I think, yeah. like if you get into a place, and I hear about this all the time, right? If you get into a place that you don't like the working conditions, or you don't like the vibe, or you don't like the philosophies, or how people are coached, or what the training is like, or what the members or clientele are like, get out. Yep. You're never stuck anywhere, you know? Um, that's what I would definitely be saying. i got a fourth one. Can I use four? Of course you can. You can use cool. as you want. Um, be you. Ooh. Be, be who you are. Yep. Uh, and I, I've mentioned this before in the Emily, the Condon episode. Say it again. It's, I will, I will never be, I actually used M, but she's not here, so that's, that's weird. I will never be you. <laughs> cool. So if I tried to be you, people look at me going, well, what are you doing? That's, mm-hmm. Stop doing that. Strange. <laughs> stop doing, stop making you, chicken noise. <laughs> <laughs> if you tried to be me, people would be like, are you okay? Yeah. You're really quiet today. <laughs> you're really quiet today. <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> So I think you got to be congruent to who you, your personality is. And that will change over time anyway, mm-hmm. based on you getting more confident with things. Uh, but people come to see me because I'm me. Mm-hmm. People go to see you because you're you. Mm-hmm. Um, not because I'm trying to be someone else. Yeah. I think you're going to make it a long way in the industry with everything we've spoken about so far, being you with your personality type. Mm-hmm. It was really interesting. I sent out a personality uh, questionnaire to my new trainer. So I've hired... Uh, I've hired three new coaches uh, to help with um, athlete development and stuff. Um, and I'm looking for another like PT to come on board and help with gym stuff, right? But what I'm doing now is I'm going, all right, I want to know what their personalities are, their personality types are, before we actually get into things mm-hmm. like deep. Like I like them as people and I like, you know, they've got the necessary qualifications to come in and help out with what I need, right, with the job roles and whatnot. But I was like, all right, I want to I wanna get to know them deeper as people and so I, how I can help them more. Yep. All right, and so I sent them all these. Uh, I just did the sixteen personalities, uh, Myers Briggs basic version online. So yep. do this free version, super simple. Let me know what you are. Blah, 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 right, then I can get to that in a second. But extras on that in a second, which was interesting. But um, when it came back, I said to them, "All right, cool." So I got that group chat. I was like, "Cool, thanks for sending these through. This is awesome to see. All different types, whatever, um, sort of. Um, what do you feel is true?" about what, what you've been assessed as and what you feel might not be true for you, right? And then one of the coaches wrote back and he said, I think I, was it? It's, it's come back that I'm very introverted and I believe that, but I don't want to be as introverted. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to have a chat about this because if that's who you are, you will learn to present yourself in a way that you can communicate more effectively, right? <laughs> okay. But being introverted that's who you are. Yeah. You know, that's part of your personality. You're not going to go from introvert to extrovert. You can get personality styles that flip, all right? But in general, you're going to be the way you are, especially, you know, 22, 23 years old. Yeah. You're not going to change that. I think, like, and, you know, the old personality um, parts are on a spectrum. Yeah. So introvert, extrovert, either end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. And you sit in here somewhere. And it's a bit mm-hmm. of a sliding scale. Mm-hmm. Like, you're never going to be here here and here, in the middle of the rest of your life. You're uh-huh. going to shift based on mm-hmm. your environment, based on where you are in your life, based yep. on everything else. So I am definitely more on that introvert side of things. But in the environment of a gym, I do become a little bit more of an extrovert. Be more extrovert. If I need to in a sporting, like in a professional sporting world, in that context where I need to get in mm-hmm. front of a team, I'll become a little bit more extrovert. If I have too many drinks, I'll become a lot more of an extrovert. <laughs> But at home, I'm right down here again. You sit there. You get your energy. And the way I like to define introvert, extrovert is how you get your energy. Yeah. So you get your energy when you're home by yourself, just chilling. You mm-hmm. know, you don't get energy from being around a lot of people all the time. No. 
more often than not myself. I I can kind of flip a little bit, but I generally get my energy when I'm around people. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so and that's how I kind of depends on the people. Of course, if I'm around friends. Of I'm course, like, I would be more <laughs> proud to be like. I just want to go back home. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I thought that was interesting when he said that. I was like, all right, cool. Well, this is something that I have to help him with. Yeah. Um, or not, not help him with, but, but like coach him with. Is that, like, hey man, just who you are. Yeah. You know, be you when you go into it. Like, yeah. that's really, really cool. What I did find interesting as part of this. So, if you know personality, the personality Myers Briggs styles, I'm ENTP. Right? I'm a debater, extroverted. Master debater. Mom. <laughs> Debater, right? Extroverted, blah 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 blah. Are out there in face, da, da, right? ENTP. Two of the trainers are ISFJ. I don't know what these are. Directly actually. opposite me. Okay. okay. And the other ones are INFJs, right? So it's like ISFJ, ISFJ, INFJ, and they have like changing um, um, transients, right? But I was like, everyone here is opposite to how I am. Which is why when I first started, like looking for the hires, I was like, all right, I'm going to have to go into the personality styles because I know when I talk to M or L, they're very different yeah. to the way I am, right? And yeah. I've got to then, in order to help communicate and make sure things are effective, I've got to understand how they work and how they think. And so that's why I'm kind of like, I want to understand that when we get into the, the training side of things. I can teach them training, that's yeah. easy. Yeah. But if I can understand how you learn, and how you want me to talk to you, we're going to blow some shit up. You've got to be able to coach them, not just teach them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I thought that was interesting. <laughs> things. So yeah. So like wrapping it all up. Wrap I, up. I loved how this went. This was, I'm, this was pretty good. I'm vibing this, this one. This is pretty good. <laughs> um, like wrapping it all up, getting back into the, the holistic, actual proper holistic side of things mm. gets me excited. I like it. Yeah. I like it. And I, I do want to go back and learn some more of it. Yeah. A couple of other things are prioritized at the moment, yep. but definitely want to get back into that. Yeah. It's important. I see the benefits. We know the benefits. Know the benefits. Yeah, definitely. And so I understand definitely. that there is more that affects the body than just the training that we talk about more often than not. Yes. You know, so we talk a lot about sports performance. We talk about butt mechanics and training, whatever. Yep. And I think we touch on these types of subjects, but we don't actually go into it in a bit more depth. So maybe we can get into a bit more depth. I can do like a follow up on what's happening and how yep. things happening in program There's design. There's a lot we can talk about. Oh my god, so much. So, um, so yeah. But until next time, my bad show.